in this video I'm going to address how we use special therapeutic contact lenses to treat lazy eye. Hi, I'm Dr. Moshe Roth. I'm a developmental optometrist board certified in vision development and vision therapy. Lazy eye means different things to different people. Some people, even some doctors, think that lazy eye means an eye that turns in or turns out relative to the other. If I can demonstrate with these pens, it may seem as though one eye is turning out or turning in relative to the other. It's not. The correct term for an eye turn is strabismus. In a different video, I discuss the different types of strabismus. The medical term for a lazy eye is amblyopia. Vision develops, and we need to have the right conditions for it to develop. Think of a flower seed in your hand. For that seed to become a flower, we need to have several conditions. We need to have the right type of dirt. If we plant the seed into beach sand, it's not likely to develop. We need water. A seed won't sprout without water. No water, no development. Heat. Flowers don't grow in the winter and sunlight. If one of those are missing, the seed is not going to develop into a flower. Vision is similar. We need to get a good picture into the eye and then get that picture to the correct part of the brain and then make sense of that picture. If one of those parts are missing, we're not going to be able to make sense of what we're seeing. What is anisometropia? Those of us who can see with both eyes have a difficult time understanding somebody who might have a problem with that. If the power or prescription of the two eyes are very different, then one eye may be getting a cl clearer picture while the other eye is not. When that happens, the brain doesn't develop the wiring between the eye and the brain. The term for that is anisometropia, meaning the two eyes have very different powers or prescriptions. When there's a large difference between the two eyes, eyeglasses can't solve that, but special contact lenses can because they're right on the eye. Patching and why it doesn't work. Many people have heard of patching where people are told to cover one eye for a certain number of hours per day. Many doctors still prescribe patching even though it rarely works. As a matter of fact, patching didn't work 30 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago. So why do some eye doctors still prescribe patching? Well, the thinking behind patching is logical on the surface. Patch the good eye so the person starts using the bad eye. Patching alone does get a short-term improvement, but usually that doesn't last. The reason it doesn't work long-term is because once we take the patch off, the brain returns to using the good eye and doesn't use the two eyes together because there's such a strong signal from the eye the person has been used to using. It's kind of like having a four-lane highway on one side and a one-lane highway on the other. Most highways are built to have the same number of lanes on each side. Some medical procedures drop out when doctors develop newer and better ones, but despite that, some doctors still patch, even though it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it makes a bad assumption that once you remove the patch, the two eyes will somehow miraculously work together. You can't work on one eye and assume that's gonna build teamwork, much as you can't develop one soccer player and assume that because you do that, the entire team is gonna to work together. It's often pediatric eye surgeons that still prescribe patching. Different types of eye doctors that children see. In the same way, it would be best to see a developmental optometrist, a doctor who deals with vision problems of children and understands how vision develops rather than just seeing a pediatric eye surgeon who might understand surgery or disease, 
but often doesn't understand how vision develops. It's kind of similar to your teeth. If someone has a problem with their teeth, it'd probably be more appropriate for them to see a dentist rather than an oral surgeon. What's the goal to treating lazy eye? The goal is to have the person use their two eyes together as a team. Special therapeutic contact lenses are the best starting point to begin developing vision from the eye that hasn't developed because of amblyopia. We don't block the vision from the good eye as a patch would. Rather, we make the good eye a little bit blurry so that the brain starts to use the information from the eye that it hasn't developed. In this way, the brain still uses both eyes but begins to develop the wiring between the eye and the brain, so ultimately we can use the two of them together. We learn how to use the two eyes together through a process called vision therapy. At times, we may use a computer program as part of the therapy, but there too, the computer program alone does not solve the problem. Vision therapy for amblyopia usually solves a problem permanently because it's guided by a therapist in the same way that a teacher guides his or her students or a parent guides their children when teaching them. Often, do-it-yourself programs don't achieve what we'd like them to because it's hard for somebody who's not an expert in this area to know what the end point is in order to move to the next level and what that next level is that we need to do. We want to help you build the skills so you're successful in school and in day-to-day -day life. Please consider calling our office at 732-679-2020 and scheduling for an examination. I'd be happy to help. I'm Dr. Moshe Roth. I'm a developmental optometrist, board certified in vision development and vision therapy.